this bottle in front of me right here and it has no water in it and I'm really thirsty and I want to drink from it but to drink out of it I have to fill it up first so I got another bottle here I'm gonna open this one up and open this one up fill it up all right now it has some water in it I'm gonna go I'm gonna drink some of this one I'm gonna drink all the water in it and now I have to repeat the process. I can't drink any water out of a bottle that has no water in it. So for me to drink the water, I first have to wait for the filling up to finish. That's how promises work in programming. You have a command, you have a process, you have something happening, and you wait till it's done to complete other code. So in this case, I cannot drink until the bottle is filled with water. I have to wait for the water to be filled for me to drink. When the water is filled, the promise is completed and I can drink out of the bottle because there is now water. It's pretty straightforward. Let's go see how it's done in the code. Let's get into the code. I'm going to try and keep this super simple because promises are hard to wrap your head around the first time around. So I'm going to keep it super simple. We're going to stick to the bottle example. We're going to have an empty bottle. We're going to fill it up and then we're going to drink from it. So the first thing we need to do, let's do a what? and make a filling bottle uh, promise. So we're gonna go new promise. And inside of the promise, we have to put an arrow function and we're gonna give it two parameters. One is resolve and one is reject. Now they're pretty self-explanatory. So if a promise is resolved, we can keep going. If a promise has an issue, we can reject and stop right there. And we can actually uh, throw an error and catch that error and display it to the user. So for now, we're going to stick with Resolve. Keep it super simple. We can make another video on promises and how they're used, let's say, with like Axios calls. So imagine um, you have a component and you need to display a bunch of data like it's your profile page on Facebook. But it takes time for you to go and grab your data from the database. So you can't load the page until the data comes in. So you got to put a loading screen or something. But if you don't, it's going to try and load a bunch of data that doesn't exist yet, and it's going to crash. So using promises, you could say, hey, get the data first, and once it's all brought over, then you can render the page, and then it won't break. We have a new promise. We're going to say, let filling. So that's just like our action of filling the bottle up. We have it autocomplete. There we go. So I'm going to give it a three-second three timeout. And here we're going to tell it to resolve. So in three seconds, it's going to run this block of code. That's what the set timeout does. And it's built into JavaScript, so you don't have to import any library or anything. And when it's done, the three seconds, it's going to resolve the promise and we can keep going. So once we do that, we have our filling bottle action finished. Now what we need to do is say dot then. So once the bottle is filled, we can drink, right? So let's just Put a little shortcut in here, a little arrow function into it, oops, to console.log. And now in here we can just say, uh, now, so once we're done filling up the bottle with water, we can take it and we can drink from it because there's water inside of it. And this will never run until this is done. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's just do that. That looks all good. We can run it. It should take about three seconds and now drinking the water. So it waits for the water to be filled. I'm just going to take this quickly. So we're going to fill up the bottle. Let's repeat the process. Filling up the bottle, one, two, three, it's full. Now we can drink from it. Console.log here and just say. So filling bottle, then it's done filling, now it's drinking. So we, like we said, we've made a promise that when the bottle's done filling up, we will drink from it. And then using this kind of code, we can build it so that 
it will make sure that it, nothing will happen until it's resolved. Now, I'm going to go back to that example of building a page. So, rendering a front end page for your profile, your profile page on Facebook, and we have to go grab your data from the database, and there's millions of users. So that's going to take a couple seconds. So when by the t we have to wait for that data to come in, and then we can render the page. If we try to render the page and we try and load the components because it's built off React, so if we try to load the components without the data being there, it's just going to throw a bunch of errors of this doesn't exist, this doesn't exist because it hasn't grabbed it yet. So most of the time when you're doing a call, like um, when you're using Axios, it's promise based. So you first have to wait for a response, and then in the response you can you can do all your code. I hope that made sense. I'm going to be, I think, doing another video on how to use promises with like Axios calls or something like that, and maybe some React. I want to start getting into React this week, so start the portfolio projects, things that you guys can put on your portfolios and resumes and get jobs from. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys, you know, this made sense for you. If it doesn't, please let me know. See you in the next one.